Hey, folks, good morning. My guest today is Casper Spiro. He's the CEO of Easy Generator, and he's both the initiator and driver behind the employee generated learning trend. He's made an impact on the field of learning as a blogger at casperspiro.com. So, good distribution channel there, and author of trainingindustry.com, Learning Solutions Magazine, CLO Magazine, and others. Also, as a speaker at various e learning conferences around the world. Casper, you ready to take us to the top? Yep. Yeah. All right. Very cool. So, hey, you came back, you came on the show back in November of last year, sort of middle of COVID. How was COVID impacting you at the time? Yeah, uh, it was a, a big boost for our business. Everything went online. Basically, I think it moved everything forward a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And you had mentioned at that time you had about 1,200 customers. I want to learn more about what you're giving them, but how many customers today? Yeah, we're a bit over that. So I, I actually made a mistake at that time. It was like 1100 and now it's around 1250 something like that. Oh, great. And what are they, why are they paying you? Tell us what you do. So what we do, we have a SaaS solution uh, with an e-learning altering tool that allows uh, supplementary experts, employees to capture their knowledge and share it with their coworkers. Mm -hmm. And so is this, are you selling to heads of HR typically or the employees directly? No, we're selling to, to, to the companies. So they, they facilitate uh, their employees with the tool. So very often we make enterprise-wide deals. And so if you sell into an enterprise and they buy 100 seats, what's that sort of HR manager after they purchase your tool? What email are they sending to the team to get them to start using Easy Generator? What's it sound like? What do you mean? What does it sound like? The, the, what the pitch is? How does an, after an you know, head of HR purchases your platform, how do they get their employees to use your platform? Why, why are employees excited to use it? Yeah, well, there, there is already a need for that. People want to share their knowledge. They want to, 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 to do that. And there are no real simple tools for that than we are. Uh, but uh, the, it's, it's a whole program uh, where we help them, onboard them. Uh, uh, we, we do webinars with them. We help them communicate around Easy Generator, uh, give them best practices. And that way we sort of build out uh, the audience. Now, this is all about creating courses. This is this just internally for teams? Or can someone like me, an influencer, create a course to sell to my community? Yeah, you can. So uh, you can just uh, subscribe for a license uh, and, uh, and buy a subscription uh, and create courses. We uh, even include hosting and result tracking for free. Uh, but that, uh, that, that is where the business started. But we now are moving more and more into the corporate market and more, bigger corporate deals. But we and still why? do that. At home. Why is that? So um, if you sell to an individual, if, uh, if uh, for example, it would be you, and something happens with you, you will cancel your account. So initially, this, uh, the, the churn was relatively high, like uh, 25% or something like that. Monthly. Now we have moved up market with bigger contracts, and the churn is, is below 10. 10%, 10 monthly or annually? Yeah. Annually, yeah. Annually, got it. Um, yeah, I think you told me churn annually was about 10%. Uh, expansion was 32, and your net dollar retention was 122. Have any of those changed? Uh, yeah, so I think that we, uh, we've grown significantly. We've grown harder last year than we expected. So we ended up like we were planning for around 90, but we ended on 94. We still are on the same pace, which means the MRR is now over in dollars over 600,000. So we made quite a step there. Okay, wait. So th that's incredible because when you came on the show last, you were doing about $360,000 a month in revenue. You're doing $600,000 a month, 7.2 million yeah. run rate. Just crossed the 500,000 euro line. So that is uh, the $600,000 line as well. Okay. I mean, th that's actually, th that's impressive growth over six months. You you've almost doubled over the past six months revenue wise. Where'd the growth come from? So, well, we had a huge, uh, we had a huge last quarter, but especially December was like a record breaking month. So our best month in growth terms ever was 90K a new uh, um, uh, MMR. And last December, just that month, we did 47K growth in one month net in, in December. Year. Yeah. Just December. Yeah. So it was a huge jump that we made. But, but why? I mean, it, it, you know, success is good, but if you don't understand why it happened, you can't replicate it. Um, it happens almost every year that December is like by far our best month. Uh, but this was like uh, exceeding all our expectations by far. And I think it was partly driven by COVID. So we really thought, that people at that time noticed, uh, so uh, working from home, even COVID will go away, working from home will not. So we now need to make choices and commitments. So they tried it. We, we saw a lot of, uh, when COVID started, we started selling a lot of pilots. So we just gave them a pilot for $1,000 a month uh, with unlimited capacity during the first month of COVID. And that really paid off in the end of the year because then they had to start renew that. And a lot of those companies went to, to enterprise contracts in one go. 
We actually had uh, uh, companies uh, going from uh, a six-month pilot uh, straight into our maximum enterprise deal, where normally we expect them to take like two or three years uh, to grow into that. You told me in December your largest customer was paying $105,000 per year. Is that still your largest customer? No, no, we have a new one. One of those pilot customers went over that. So I think it's like uh, in dollars, one thirty. Wow. Okay. And and why are they paying so much? Like, what are you upselling against? Is it number of seats? What's the what else? What else are you upselling? Yeah. So the upsell is is uh, more facilities, uh, better guidance, higher SLAs. Uh, but it is uh, the key thing is unlimited seats. So, so people upgrade to get those unlimited seats. Correct. Yeah. If they buy an enterprise license, then. Uh, they, if they go over a certain number of seats, they can buy an unlimited uh, license. And then uh, it doesn't really matter if it's like 1,000 or 5,000 people altering, the price will remain the same. When you say better SLA, you mean going from 99% guaranteed uptime to 99.9% guaranteed uptime, or you refund them? Uh, we, we have 99.5, uh, and we do indeed uh, refund them if we don't make that. But uh, we're working on uh, going uh, close to 100%, so it will be 99.99 uh, shortly. So, so you haven't refunded anybody from that? Yeah, what we did in the past year is that we didn't refund anything. No, 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 because we were way, way over that. So, uh, But uh, we are uh, increasing the quality of our hosting. So we took away every single point of failure that we had in the last year. We're now working on continuous deployment. So we can also go uh, put things live without going down. Um, and uh, we, so it will be really close to 100%, uh, hopefully, in a year from now. Okay. Now, talk to me about capital efficiency. Have you raised additional capital or still just the 500000 from 2013? No, it's still... So we don't have... Uh, to also, the, in 2013, that was also just our own shareholders uh, at that time. So the company were... So we're still bootstrapped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So does that mean you own 100% of the business? Sorry? Walk me through how the ownership works, because I think you told me that this was a spin out. Yeah. So initially, we were part of, a, of, of another company. So I started it up as a business unit and we uh, sort of um, grew out of there. Uh, and now we're an independent company. We're close to 100 people now uh, making a profit. Uh, yeah, how, much, how, much, how, much, how much profit per month? So last month was 30,000. Okay. But overall, it will, I expect a year because we're investing a lot of money. I expect us to be just above break even. So just on the positive side of that. So making a profit is not a goal, uh, but uh, we are growing faster than we can actually hire people and spend money. Yep. Have any VCs reached out asking to invest? And if so, what's the highest valuation you turned down? So uh, we, we haven't done into that. We have a lot of interest. So we actually held a webinar for all the, the, the VCs that, were, that wanted to invest in us. Uh, but we didn't uh, ever really talk to them. So we expect maybe in a few years from now, but right now we can uh, fund our own growth uh, and we're growing like 100% per year. So that is what we want to do. Uh, maybe if we have plans to even accelerate from that, that could be something or when the shareholders decide that they, uh, they want to, to exit. But uh, for now, it's not a plan. The parent company owns 100% equity of your business. You have a rev share agreement. How does that work? Yeah, it's very simple. So uh, if we sell the company, uh, I have a, a, an agreement with that, that I get a percentage of the sale. Oh, I see. Got it. So, so interesting. Got it. So is that more or less than 20%? It will be less. Yeah. Less than 20%, but more than 10%, hopefully? Uh, no, probably not. Come on. So do you regret, this is what I asked. You've built a great business here. You put in your hard sweat, tears, you spun it out. I mean, do you, do you wish you, uh, you know, tried to negotiate for more back in 2013? Um, well, maybe if I knew what I know now, maybe, but it's, mm -hmm. as I told you last time, it's not really my big drive. And when we will sell the company, so one of our competitors articulates, they got an investment in their uh, first investment after 20 years of business and the investment was 1.5 billion or 40% of the shares. Mm -hmm. If you talk numbers oh. like that, if we even come close to that, we will not, but if we do that, then, uh, it doesn't really matter if you have like a five or 10% because it's still too much money. I mean, when I hear deals like that, and that actually happened just recently, that happened July 1st, but you also have Kajabi growing like crazy, train you all. You have uh, some companies that actually have IPO'd in this space on the Canadian Stock Exchange. Like if you're going to make money in the space, it feels like now is the time to do that. A big secondary, something like that. Why aren't you guys planning to do that? 
Yeah, I think uh, we have to trust that we can do even better in a few years' time. But and the, in the end of the day, that is also because I'm not the, the, the shareholder. That's the call of the shareholders, of course, uh, to make. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm building the business. Yeah, I mean, but what they must be thinking about this. I mean, again, you have to you have to recognize timing and product is everything in in startup land. And you guys have the beautiful tailwinds of COVID. We're not going to have, I don't think, another global shutdown in the next 10 years. That's that, that will not happen indeed. <laughs> yeah. So like, is it now the maximum time, the highest growth, the most noise, the most best valuations? Shouldn't you pull the trigger yeah. now? Yeah, probably we'll get uh, indeed uh, the highest multiplier or anything. So in, indeed, that's true. So you want to do it, but the parent company doesn't. No, I'm uh, so even if they would sell the company, I still wanted to, to still bring it a few steps further. So that is really what I'm working for. So if the company is being sold to new ownership, that wouldn't really change for me. Yeah, yeah. How much do you think the company is worth today? Well, yeah, so uh, we are doing uh, this year probably around 7 to 7.5 million in ARR. So depends on the multiplier, but it can be anything between 70 and 100. I even heard uh, multipliers of 20 and more. So, well, you can do the math. Yeah, and I, I think sometimes that's even conservative. But yeah, maybe between 100 million and 200 million. Um, of the 100 people on the team today, how many are engineers? We have like 20, 25 uh, is the technical team, which is engineers uh, plus QAs and DevOps. And do you have any quota carrying sales reps? We, we have a uh, sales rep, yeah. We have uh, like uh, seven AEs and I think 12 BDR, something like that. And what is your quota target for those AEs? So they, if they start as a junior, it will be, uh, I think, uh, around $3,000. And uh, that will go up to like a three and a half, four thousand mark uh, when they are a senior. What does that mean? They have, that's the new ARR they have to bring in each month? Yes, yes, new MMR. And Correct. new monthly work. So each yeah. month they have to bring in 3,000 of new MRR or that 36,000 bucks of new ACV every single month. So 36,000 times 12, they have to bring in about 450,000 of new ARR in their first year. What about at scale, your best AEs? Do they have like a million dollar quota, $2 million quota? Um, I wouldn't know though. So no, they, they uh, we have, I think the quota will be the same, but we have like an uncapped uh, a system of bonuses. So that is uh, where they, they, they go for. So How does they, that work? What does that mean? Uncapped system of bonuses. So they will get a percentage of each sale. They also will get a percentage of each sale, which upsells within a year. And, um, and we, did, we, we don't have a limit on that. So the, the more successful they are in their sales, the higher the bonus will be. I see. Are you still paying about 4,000 bucks in CAC to get a new customer? Yeah, around that. I think it may be a bit more. So it will be closer to 5.5, I think. We are really uh, increasing our effort uh, with marketing. So I expanded that team. So it's, uh, let me see, it's 5.8. So $5,800. I love that. You, you come on Nathan's show and you have your metrics pulled up, ready to go. I love that. Where yeah. are you spending that money? So I think, yeah, mostly uh, what we already did a, a long time is on Google, but we are sort of now also uh, paying attention to other sources. So we're doing Bing, we're doing LinkedIn. Um, we also do a lot of webinars uh, that we host and do ourselves. So uh, do a lot of content marketing with white papers, working on ebooks, uh, stuff like that. So we are sort of broadening the scope of the leads. And we do see that the, the, the harder leads, like the webinar leads and the, the, the content leads, they are actually bringing in more money. They're closer to outbound leads than the, just the inbound leads that come in through the website. Last question. The rev share agreement you originated back in 2013, where you get 5 to 10% of the business on a sale, is that transferable? In other words, if someone's listening right now and they want to come to you and offer you five or 10 million bucks to buy that contract, like the right for 5% at exit, would you sell? Would you consider selling? If I would sell the 5% of the business for that? Sorry. No, no, no. So you have an agreement where you get five to 10% of the business at the okay. sale. Is that saleable? If someone wanted to buy that from you personally for five to 10 million bucks, would you sell it? How would I sell it? Uh, I, I'm not even sure if that if that's possible. Uh, I, I don't know. No, I, I think I, I think that we're just at the beginning. So I, I really think that we. Uh, so I think if we will get an investment in, it will be to grow faster, not to sell a majority of the shares. And I really believe that we can grow way faster than 100% per year. So that is the ambition. So uh, I think we can do better than that. 
I love the ambition, but I disagree. I think we're in a very special time for firms like yours, and we are at the peak. Peak growth, peak revenue, peak valuation, but we will see what happens. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, favorite business book. One last remark on that, by the way, because we are on a growth level of the, the 90 plus percent for four years in a row now. So it's not really just a peak. It's a consistent yeah, but a lot of that growth has come from COVID. We're not going to have another, we're coming out of COVID now. We're not going to have another COVID that's going to keep propelling your crazy growth rates. I okay, think now is a very unique time where the past 12 months looks very good for all your historical financials. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah good point. We'll see. We'll see. Number one, what's your favorite book? So uh, I have it here, by the way. So uh, I'm rereading it. It's a working smarter field book, or uh, I'm reading a couple of books of this. It's written by Jay Cross. It's a guy who changed our industry. He's wow. like, uh, my, 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 my master in e-learning. Okay, number two. He died there. a few years ago, I'm afraid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Is there, Number two, is there a founder you're following or studying? So, but also a book I reread. I think I will go for Steve Jobs. I reread his uh, biography but because I love how he had a vision and was able to, to translate that vision into product and a business. I, I really admire him for that. Number three, is there an online tool that you're really enjoying right now? I'm really into Miro recently, creating the mind maps there, but also... Miro, it's a tool where you can draw all kinds of things. So you can M I R O. I think it's a Russian tool, which is growing really fast, and I love it. Huh, interesting. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Six, maybe a bit more. Okay. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? I'm married for 40 something years uh, to my uh, high school sweetheart, and we have three kids together, three sons, and they're wow. between 25 and 31. And how old are you, 58, or did you have a birthday? I just had my birthday last week, so I'm now 59, yeah. Happy birthday, 59. Last question, what's something you wish you knew when you were 20? Follow your instinct, go with your guts. <laughs> Guys, there you have it. Easy Generator grew from, call it, about a 4 million run rate 18 months ago to over $7 million run rate today. Their team has also grown. Customers now 1,250. They're making it easier for enterprises to create courses internally for employees to get onboarded faster. A hot space right now. We'll see what happens next. Thinks the company's worth maybe between 100 million and 200 million bucks, and it's profitable. They're bootstrapped, make about $30,000 per month in profit. Casper, thanks for taking us to the top. Thank you. Bye, Nathan. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember, these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.